All right, we've rocked the socks off of Stack Crunch. Now, let's look at mean and standard deviation because I told you those are never going away. This is mean and standard deviation we're going to use for the rest of the course, right? And they're a huge concept in statistics. So, more than just this course, it's a concept of statistics. Now, we're using mean and look at the words we're using again. Remember, we already talked about that. Anytime you see expected or expected value, you're talking about the mean. So those are interchangeable. So now we are expanding our concept, right? And standard deviation of a binomial random variable. So a binomial experiment with n trials. Check it out. We're still using the same thing. Probability of success is a P. Boom. Has the mean and the standard deviation by these formulas. The mean of x here is in p. The standard deviation of x is the square root of n p times 1 minus p. Those are parentheses. Make those bigger so we can see them better. All right? That's what it is. So your mean is the same thing here as the expected value and I'm going to write it out as the expected number of successes in in trials of the experiment. If this is the expected number of successes in in trials of the experiment. Just because I want to make sure that you get Oops, I'm going to scoot it down a little bit. I want to make sure you get the concept of the mean is the same thing as the expected value. So this expected is the same thing as the mean. All right. And, you, of course, you have your trials and you have your successes. Now, here's the beauty of this. You don't have to memorize these. These two formulas are given on your formula sheet. So you will have these available. You don't have to memorize these, all right? So you'll have your formula sheet available to you for your tests, and then you'll be able to use um, these formulas because they're right there on the formula sheet. All right, so let's do this. According to CTIA, ooh, check it out. We're back in the same boat again here with some chocolate, right? 72% of adult Americans would rather give up chocolate than their cell phone. In a random sample of 300 households, determine the mean and standard deviation who would rather give up chocolate than their cell phone, right? Okay, so what are we looking at here? So N is equal to 300. Good, because that's my sample. And what is P equivalent to here? 0. 0.72. Good, because it always has to be that decimal. You've got this. All right, so let's do it right now. Here's my mean or my expected value is n times p so the mean is 300 times 0 0.72 what is 300 times 0 0.72 do you have that on your calculator 216 good so my mean here is 216 now let's look at our standard deviation our standard deviation is the square root of NP1 minus P. So let's fill all that in there. N is 300 times my P of 0.72. 1 minus that 0.72. Now put all that in your calculator. Make sure everything goes underneath the radical. That makes an impact. Right? And then you actually have these parentheses around this second part. That makes an impact too. All right, so you should get the square root of, oops, 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 not the square root. What's wrong with me? You should just get 7.8. Is that what you got? If not, then we need to make sure you're using your calculator correctly. Okay. Got it? Does that make sense? So here is what we're looking at. Let's go purple. This means out of 300 households, out of 300 households, we expect 216 uh, to give up chocolate.
kind of ran out of room there, didn't I? Out of 300 households, we would expect 216 to give up chocolate versus their cell phone. Do you see that? Crazy, right? Yeah, I'd probably do that too. I feel like I'm so attached to that thing now that it just is what it is. All right, so mean or expected value and standard deviation. Those never go away, and they're still here to stay for this part, too. All right, now graph, just like we graph everything else, let's just talk about these for a little bit. So we're going to graph this. Well, guess what? I already did it. What I would like you to do is understand the concept behind it. So if you're going to graph this distribution where n is 10, so I have 10 pieces of data here, and P, right, is 0.2. Comment on the shape of the distribution. Look at this distribution. What do you see? It is skewed to the right. How do I know it's skewed to the right? Because the tail is to the right. So this is skewed right. Now, let's talk about this here for another just a second that we've got. What do you know about P in this instance? So it's the probability of what's going to happen, right? So the probability of what's going down here. Then I have, if I were to divvy this up and split it up, the probability goes between 0 and 1, right? My probability here is at point 2. Do you see how that also makes that where the majority of your data is hanging out over here on this side because P is less than 0.5 because that would be halfway on my data. That is also another indicator that this is skewed right. Okay, okay. So what do you think about this next one? So still N equals 10. I still have 10 pieces of data here that we're looking at. And my probability is at 0.5. What do you notice about this graph? Bell-shaped, right? And what do you see about P? Equals 0.5, literally what we were just talking about. So this is bell-shaped, and P is equal to that 0.5. So you can look at the graph itself, you can look at the value of P, and you can get an idea about how the shape is going to happen here. Well, lo and behold, ah, uh, we have one more. <laughs> Real shocker to you, isn't it? Look at the shape of this one. How is this one skewed? To the left, because that's where the tail is. And what do you see about P? Uh, it is greater than halfway. So that means that my data is centered up here in this top half. But keep in mind, this is skewed left, even though my data is up here higher, because that's where the tail is. Same thing with skewed right. Even though my data is back here, the majority of it, it's skewed to the right because um, that's where my tail is. My tail is to the left, skewed left. I just want to make sure that we're clear on how that plays out. All right? Cool.